It is Thursday, June 17th, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Today on the show, we'll get you up to speed on what happened yesterday across the country, including some driver changes. And we'll look ahead to tonight's racing for the Outlaws, All-Stars, uh, USAC, Lucas, and more. So let's jump in. If you're a regular watcher or listener to the show, you've heard me talk plenty in the past about driver changes in dirt racing. Things can go south really quickly, and sometimes we're surprised by moves, and sometimes we aren't. Before yesterday's all-star action got underway at Waynesfield, it started to trickle out on social media that Ian Madsen was suddenly out of the McGee 11 sprint car. His name had been removed from the car, and Spencer Baston was listed on the night's draw sheet. This was a move that surprised me, and it sounds like quite a few other folks as well. Madsen was second in the all-star point standings behind Tyler Courtney following Tuesday's racing at Sharon, and had just picked up his first win of the season last Friday night at Attica. But just five days after that victory, Madsen was out and Baston was in. Neither side has commented publicly on the departure, and there's no word on what's next for Madsen. According to reports on social yesterday, the team will move forward with Basin behind the wheel, but we'll see how long that actually lasts. Basin finished 15th last night in his debut with the team. I get that racing is always about what have you done for me lately, and no seat is ever really safe, but this one caught me off guard. Through 27 starts in 2021, Madsen had 11 top 5s, 18 top 10s, that win, and was second to Courtney in the standings. It's hard to think that wasn't enough to keep a ride, especially when this was the, the pairing's first season together. But I'm obviously not privy to what was happening inside the team, and I've never owned a sprint car, so I guess I could be completely off base here. The All-Stars are incredibly competitive this season, and Courtney is the only driver to really set himself apart. We've had 19 different winners in 28 races, just to give you an idea of how tough it's been. Madsen is a talented driver, though, and hopefully he finds a ride soon. On to the racing last night. After not really getting a chance to compete for the win on Tuesday night at Sharon because of the track conditions, Kyle Larson made up for lost time at Waynesfield. He started on the outside pole, fought off a mid-race charge from Rico Abreu, and led all but one lap en route to his second sprint car win of the week and third with the All-Stars this season. Rico, Courtney, Parker Price Miller, and Zeb Wise completed the top five. I'm not going to launch into any more superlatives today about Larson, but I do think we might be moving into a different phase of Larson's dominance here. I've seen some negativity about him in recent days, including some comments on some of my own content, and I wonder if we aren't starting to see some Kyle Larson fatigue rising up from race fans. He's been winning a lot in incredible fashion, so it's hard to not talk about him. And for the most part, fans are interested in to hear about what you know people like me have to say about him. Over the last 28 days, three of my top five most viewed YouTube videos had Kyle Larson on the thumbnail. But we might be getting to that kind of New York Yankees, Jimmy Johnson, New England Patriots phase of, you know, Larson's winning where some people just don't want to hear about it anymore. Certainly an interesting dynamic to continue following going forward. Larson is done racing uh, on the dirt, at least for this week, uh, with his focus now shifting to the NASCAR weekend at Nashville. With three nights of Ohio Sprint Speed Week still to go, Tyler Courtney has taken over the week-long points battle. He leads Danny Dietrich by 16 points headed to Muskegon County tonight. And with Madsen now out, Courtney's grip on the season-long points lead grew even stronger last night. A sixth for Corey Eliason combined with a rough night for Hunter Schoenberg means Eliason is now second with 100% back to third. But the margin to Courtney is 212 points. Courtney continues the pace he's been on over the last 17 races. He'll be impossible to run down. Action tonight gets underway at 6.15 p.m. local time for hot laps. Summer Nationals and Modified, uh, modified Nationals continued last night at Peoria Speedway for night number two. But even though it was a new day and a new track, the results were exactly the same. Late model feature went caution free and Ryan Unzicker was out front for most of the race, but Bobby Pierce never let him get too far away. With eight laps to go, Pierce slipped by on the high side and drove away to his 29th career Hell Tour win. Reigning champion uh, Brian Shirley finished second, Unzicker slipped to third, Tanner English was fourth, and Devin Moran fifth. It was a really fun race to watch with the leaders in constant lap traffic through the 40 laps. You can watch the highlights on the Dirt Car Racing YouTube channel and the full race uh, full race replay on Dirt Vision. In the night's modified program, it was again all Nick Hoffman. He was quick time, won his heat race, started on the pole, and led all 25 laps en route to the win. Dave Wheatholder was second, Ray Bollinger third, Alan Weiser fourth, and Tyler nicely finished fifth. The first week of the Summer Nationals keeps rolling at Kankakee County tonight. You can watch all of the action live on Dirt Vision. 
Last night's USAC Sprint Car feature at Bridgeport Motorsports Park also went caution-free, running only 8 minutes and 47 seconds from green flag to checkered flag. Shane Cottle started on the pole and led the first 16 laps, but Robert Ballou was on the move behind him from 5th. On lap 17, Ballou made his move, slipping by the throttle into turn 3 on the bottom. From there, it was all the madman out front, with Ballou picking up his second win of the season and second in four starts. Cottle, uh, Shane Cottle finished second, Chris Windham third, Brady Bacon hard charged from 14th to finish fourth, and Briggs Danner picked up his first ever USAC National Sprint Car Top 5 with a 5th place run. Blue continues to be the hottest driver in the series, and last night was his 13th straight top 10 finish. The sprint cars continue Eastern Storm tonight at Sealands Grove Speedway. You can watch live on Flow Racing. Another racing last, uh, action last night, Emerson Axum continued his solid 2021 season with a win in the Power Eye Illinois Speed Week opener at Charleston Speedway. He topped days in Pursley and Buddy Kofoid. Illinois Speed Week continues tonight at Lincoln Speedway with 600cc micros also on the card. Looking towards other racing happening tonight, the big ones are the Lucas Oil Late Models at Magnolia, the World of Outlaws Late Models at State Line, and the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars at 34 Raceway. Tonight kicks off a busy weekend for all three series. Lucas hasn't raced since Hudson O'Neill bagged a Show Me 100 win at Lucas Oil Speedway on May 29th. Tim McCready leads the current points over O'Neill and Jonathan Davenport. Bobby Pierce and Jimmy Owens were the winners at Magnolia in 2020. Obviously don't expect Pierce to be there with Summer Nationals ongoing. The World of Outlaws Late Models have three Pennsylvania shows this weekend between State Line, Thunder Mountain, and Sealands Grove. Chris Madden will continue to try and run down Brandon Shepard for the championship, with a gap currently 46 points between the two. Max Blair was the most recent Outlaw winner at State Line in 2019 and should be again one to watch tonight. Now, after starting the season with Ross Bales in the car, Big Frog Motorsports is back with the Outlaws this weekend, but this time with Florida's Mark Whitener behind the wheel. Whitener last drove for Big Frog back in 2015 and is making his first start outside of Volusia in the last two years. As for the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars, they kick off a stretch of eight races in 10 days, starting tonight at 34 Raceway. Brad Sweet will try and protect his shrinking advantage in the standings, but David Gravel has close to 48 points back, and Carson Macedo is only another 12 points behind Gravel. Sweet hasn't won or finished on the podium in nine consecutive races. Parker Price Miller was the winner at 34 Raceway last season, but the DirtTracker.com and Lick's Prediction Formula likes Donnie Schatz tonight. He was the pole sitter in that race last season and is still seeking win number 300. If you want to watch any of these races I just talked about or find others, I do have you covered. There are 13 shows on the streaming services for today, including both World of Outlaws series on Dirt Vision and the Summer Nationals, the All-Stars, USAC, and more over at Flow Racing. Lucas is on MAV TV, as is Power Eye, uh, Indiana, or uh, Illinois uh, Midget Week, um, and a bunch more is there as well. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope everybody has a good Thursday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. You can find Dirt Tracker Daily where you get podcasts and YouTube. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and leave a review. You can follow Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Dirt Tracker. And you can check out the website for all kinds of cool dirt racing stuff by visiting dirttracker.com. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily. 